congregation, meaning that we believe that all God's children should be welcome and celebrated here in our congregation. 
Um, the United Church of Christ has a saying that we've kind of adopted here as well that goes, um, wherever you are on life's journey, or wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you, you are welcome here. here. So if you're, if you're watching at home on uh, Facebook, in a little bit we're going to be doing communion. So maybe you want to gather your, element, your communion elements, some crackers and juice, whatever you have on hand, so that you can celebrate in the Lord's Supper with us in a little bit. Next, we're going to go to our call of worship, which is how great is our God. computer that we're running it on isn't PowerPoint, it's uh, Keynote, and so somewhere in the conversion something's going awry, even though we make it so we can sing it across all the slides, it's still yeah, technical stuff. So, okay, so moving on, um, Joe, if you would like to do the prayers of the people. Almighty and ever-loving God, in faith we bring our prayers to you, for the church, for the world, and for ourselves, rejoicing in the certain knowledge that you will hear and answer our prayers. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Gracious God, we thank you for your blessings in our neighborhoods. We pray for Pastor Ed and wife Cindy, for all those who serve you in leadership roles, and those who prepare service and outreach activities. For all who use their skills and talents in practical ways, often unseen or acknowledged. May our motives always be pure and help us to be gentle with ourselves and with each other. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of justice, we thank you for the beauty we see all around us, the sunshine and the rain, the sounds that delight us, the taste of good food, and the joy of Time spent with friends and family. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for men, women, and children throughout the world who lack what we have in abundance. For people who have no peace or security in their lives. For families who have, have no homes, who lack clean water, fresh food, and adequate medical equipment and supplies. For refugees living in temporary shelters who hope to find new homes, new lives here, but instead feel unwelcome, unwanted, and forgotten. For volunteer medical staff who risk their lives to save and treat victims of war and terrorism. For all who work to bring peace and reconciliation into places of violent conflict. Guide the decisions and actions of those in positions of power, and may we always be compassionate and ready to defend the poor and the suffering. This we pray. 
Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of love, as we look at all you have created, we also look in despair at the destruction and pollution caused by our hands, which are spoiling our world, our world at an alarming speed. We pray that you will raise up people with knowledge and influence who will make effective changes and are not afraid to speak out against apathy and greed. It will shake things up to do better and reverse the damage. Help us to be aware of our attitudes and judgment, and encourage us all to make a difference in the good of all. This we pray. Lord, Lord to our prayers. O oh God of healing, we thank you for your blessings on the doctors and nurses whose knowledge, skills, and compassion do so much to alleviate the pain and distress of illness. We pray for all those today that are suffering in body, mind, spirit, and various addictions. Give them courage, hope, and peace, and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain, and suffering. We ask continued prayers for Lefty and Cindy. Lefty is out of the hospital, back in rehab. We ask for prayers for Barb and Nancy. Barb is still dealing with complications with cancer. We ask prayers for Jacob from MCC Tampa, who's having a challenge recovering from COVID. We ask prayers for Phil and Sharon. We ask prayers of healing for Gloria. But well, God, we ask you to hear these prayers that we present to you today. We ask you to hear the prayers for all those who we have been asked to pray and those that we hold in our heart. This we pray. Lord, Lord to our prayer. Well, now is the time that's supposed to be my favorite time of this service, when we get to share God's love and peace with each other. Um, so let's share God's love and peace with each other. And with you out there on Facebook, hanging in there with us, love and peace to you, love and peace everyone. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had been crippled for that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on these days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to get it work? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Thank you, Les. Good. Sometimes I wonder. When things go wrong. <laughs> you ever notice that when things go wrong, people say that, oh, I'm not supposed to do that? Or they'll say, oh, the devil's trying to keep me from doing that. Kind of whichever way you look at it. I just think, as Forrest Gump said, it happens. And we must just go on. Um, I was going to tell you a story. This one time when I was in the military, um, we were in Germany. 
we, we were actually in Rome. We were on vacation. And uh, Cindy and I were running around all over Rome because we never go, when we go on vacation, we never take those packages where they take you on tours. We just get a map. Go for an adventure. And that's what we were doing this Sunday morning. Getting to be Sunday afternoon. And we're running all over Rome. And we happen to have tickets. Actually, that was the day we got kicked out of the bath. Or Sistine Chapel. Cindy had us kicked out of the Sistine Chapel. That's another story. I'll tell you about that stuff. Anyway, we learned that uh, Avante means hurry along in Italian, by the way. Um, so we, we were ushered out of the Sistine Chapel, and we were looking for a place to go, and we had a ticket to go to St. George's. St. George? Yes? It was St. George. Okay. So we get in the train station, we travel to St. George's, we come up out, and there's barricades everywhere. And we're like, oh no. And there's carbonara. Cars and cars and motorcycles, and the carbonara are everywhere. And it's like, what? happened here. We thought we might just want to go back and get out of here. But then we looked up and we saw the Jumbotron. And that's when it dawned on us. This was Pope Benedict's first mass as Pope. And so we ended up, we walked over and we got in the crowd and we watched on the Jumbotron as he did his homily and then the most beautiful thing now, this is the, the kind of thing that, that goes along with our story. Because we were blessed, but the problem is we probably shouldn't have been blessed at that time. Okay. They did communion. And when he blessed the communion, all these Franciscan monks or priests got the communion and filed out of the outside where we were standing. We were all standing, watching on the door. And they started passing out the host. And it was something that was so beautiful when we were all right there. And we walked up and we stood in front of the priest and he gave us the host. He said, the body of Christ. And we took communion with all these people. And we're not Catholic. But we took communion with all these people. Now I'm sure if the priest that gave us the communion would have known we weren't Catholic, we wouldn't have had communion. But it was such a blessing, even though it was technically wrong. That's kind of the thinking that we see in our text. It's not about rules. It's about people. It's about people. The other day, Cindy showed me a video and it reminded me um, there's two kinds of morality. There's probably many kinds of morality, but the two basic kinds is a vertical morality and a horizontal morality. And I was talking to Peter before our meeting the other day. And we talked about most people think on the terms of a vertical morality. Because they think God's up here or whoever and it comes down to us. The only problem with this vertical morality is where do we land? Because it gives us a sense of there's a hierarchy. Because God said it to this person and this person writes what God said. And then Someone interprets what God says. And so you get like this person, the prophet. Then you got this person, the priest. Then you got this person, your local bishop or whatever. And so there's this level of morality, a level of, of our spirituality as well. The only problem is when we take that concept and we put it into actual if you will, secular, then where do we fall on that morality? You see, if we go back several hundred years when the 
whole world wasn't discovered yet, the Christians were going to Christianize the whole world. And their morality was up here. And the savages were down here. And they had to be taught morality. That's a hierarchical morality. But we need to think at a horizontal morality. A morality that says that it's about people. It's about us. It's about doing what's right here and now, not a set of rules that might not apply to this situation. A horizontal morality that says everybody is on the same playing field. There is no uncivilized people and their morality is down here. I think, when I think of that, I think of the movie Trading Places, the old movie with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy's this beggar that's on the streets and he's trying to con people out of money all the time. And Dan Aykroyd is this high uh, profile Wall Street wheeler dealer, one of the, the best in his firm. And the, the owners of the company that Dan Aykroyd goes and takes everything away from him and gives it to Eddie Murphy to see if Eddie Murphy would come up to their level of morality. But in truth, all they did was put him on a same, the same level playing field. And they were looking down at him before that. That's what we're talking about, horizontal morality. Another illustration is the swimming sign. Y'all remember this kind of uh, semantics, little uh, philosophy. So if you're standing beside a pond or a lake and you see someone in the middle drowning and you see a sign that says no swimming, do you swim out there or go out there to get them and bring them in? Because as soon as you jump in the water, technically, you're swimming. So you're breaking the law. What do you do? Well, hopefully you go out there and save the person. And that takes us back to our text today. Today's text, Jesus was breaking the law of the synagogue by healing on the Sabbath. One of the very first things that we, we, we are taught in, in rabbinical school, right? Oh, wait a minute. That's... But that's one of the very first things Jewish people are taught. The Sabbath is holy. Now, I'm going to say her name again. This twice for this pulpit. But, uh, she'll get over it. Cindy likes to watch this show about... Um, is that three times? Oh, uh, she likes to watch the show about uh, Hasidic Jews and, and how they, they, uh, they live their life. And one of the things is they're only allowed to walk so far on the Sabbath day. And if they walk beyond that, then they're, they're breaking Sabbath law. And they have little uh, wires that run all across their neighborhoods. That kind of tell them how far they can go and how far they, they have to stop and they go back and stuff like that. And that's what Jesus was doing. You're not supposed to do work, any work, on the Sabbath day. And when Jesus healed this woman, he was, they thought he was doing work on the Sabbath. Wow. And, and, and the, the best part about this, the best part about this scripture is, if you look at it again, the synagogue leader does not go directly at Jesus and says, you did this wrong. But he turns basically towards the woman and says to her, why didn't you come on any other day to be healed? <laughs> kind, of like, kind of like our blessing of taking the communion with the Pope. We just didn't know that that was going to happen. We were just at the right place at the right time and we were blessed. And this woman happened to be at the right place 
at the right time to be blessed. Because Jesus understood that the law, the law of Moses, the prophets, and everything is about caring for each other. It's, the, it's our guidelines so that we know when we're not caring for each other. It's not a hierarchical system. It's a horizontal system. That's what we're looking at. When we can look across any divide and see that everyone is on the same level. And if everyone is on the same level, why aren't we taking care of each other? And that's what it's all about. It's all about people. It's not about how good I can be. It's not that I can go and say, I fulfill all the laws. I've never broken one law. Yes, but how many people did you let drown while you were not breaking the law? Our morality should respect and honor all people. There is no levels. There is no uncivilized report. They're poor, and you know the poor are always trying to steal from you. No, they're trying to live. They have the same morality as you have. But they're trying to take care of their own. If we all tried to take care of each other, then there wouldn't be that kind. See, we fall into the hierarchy of morality a lot of times when we look down upon people. In John 4, in 1 John, excuse me, 1 John chapter 4, the passage shows Jesus' teachings. This is one of Jesus' disciples, and he's writing about Jesus. And it's showing that Jesus is about us. love. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. And Jesus taught us it's about taking care of each other. More than the rules. And Jesus' action in our text for today shows us that very, very thing. It's all about people. So let us love one another. Jesus. 
is our Savior, sanctified us forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, Spirit that we call God, we thank you for the blessings that you've given us in our lives. Right now we give back just a portion of those blessings. We ask that you to put your hand upon them and make them be an everlasting uh, tribute to your love, that we would be able to spread your love to everyone and all would take care of each other on that level playing field. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and pass out the communion. Um, as they're doing this, um, I ask that you please just take the communion and hold it, and we'll take it together um, like we always do. Um, and uh, while they're doing that, I will read our uh, <laughs> preparing our hearts. God of love without boundary or condition, take from our hearts anything that is not of you. Break them open so that all falseness and judgment, all selfishness fall from our hearts, making room for you and your love for you and for all people. Consecration and transformation prayer. On the night that Jesus would offer himself so that all might know love, he called to himself all that he loved and all who loved him, and he ate with them. At the meal he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he offered it to them, saying, Take, this is my, this, take and eat this, this is my body broken for you, my heart broken open for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup of blessing, and he raised it, and he blessed it. And he passed it to all of them, saying, Take this cup and drink it. It is the cup of the new covenant of love, a love without boundary or condition, the cup of love that is poured out for you and for all. Do this in remembrance of me. Please join me in the consecration of our meal. God, we ask that you take these simple gifts of the earth, the wheat of the field, and the juice of the fruit, and the gifts that are here entrusted to us and to each and every one of us, and transform them into spiritual food so that we may become whole and holy as in one body, in you, in Christ, together, the body of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at Faith Family, we believe in an open communion. That is because it is the Lord Jesus Christ who invites you to this table. Please partake as you see fit.
It's the body of Christ. The cup of the new covenant. A prayer of thanksgiving. God who called us into being, breathing your very spirit into each of us, we give you thanks for you are our God and we are your children. We give you thanks that you have called us to be the people here at Faith Family, to follow you with our whole heart and our whole soul and with our whole being. As we seek to spread the gospel of love throughout the world, teaching it to teaching to teaching it to embrace your boundless and steadfast love, holding open our arms to all the world as you have done. We give you thanks and we love you in the name of Christ Jesus. <coughs> Like it doesn't like to be with us in our service. Just I tell you what, 
You, you saw you saw that it, it attacked me too, right? <laughs> Technology is working against me today. It's worth telling. We're okay. We'll survive. We'll survive. We'll, we'll survive. Um, actually, I was hoping you would put my announcements because I always forget our announcements. It's an island. Uh, with announcements. There's someone about it. Okay. Uh, save the date. Uh, top golf is not October. Or, okay, let's go with that first. Ice Cream Social, twenty uh, fourth is a Wednesday, one to three. Uh, I'm going to be there. Our church is going to be there. This is at USF. USF. Marshallson. Marshallson. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to throw another letter. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, it's the LGBTQ. Uh, ice cream social. Um, the last time we went was before COVID, and the kids just they they were amazed that there's a church out there that they can come to and be loved for who they are. It's so we need to, we need to have our presence there for them. So if you can make it, it's one to three in the Marshall Center at USF. So join us about 12, 12 30. Yeah, it should take us about, let, yeah, they'll, they'll give us our table and everything like that and set up. Um, so, next. Oh, Wednesday Bible studies. Wednesday Bible studies will start again in September. We'll be doing it live stream um, over Facebook. The same with Sunday morning Bible study. Yes, I said it. Sunday morning we will do live stream a Bible study. Um, we're going to start back in, I think we're in the book of Ezra, um, and we will uh, continue through through the New Testament, going through all the books and just hitting the major highlights of what's in each of the books. Um, so that will start 10.30 on Sunday morning, the first Sunday in September. What else? Yes, yes. How can you start on this Sunday? Thanks to it's on. Pop ball. Don't look at the date. The date is wrong. The date is now 9... 18. 18. At 10.30? 10. 10. Starts at 10. No, it's still shaking. 10. 10. Okay. So it starts at 10 o'clock. If you haven't already contacted Cindy about being there, um, you're, you're, you're running out of spaces. No, you're not running out of spaces. We'll make more spaces. But we do have a lot of people already signed up, so we're looking forward to, to doing that top ball. Okay. It's free. It's free? Yeah. Thank you. We're going to have the, the, the 2020 raffle. I was going to go with the 2020 and the Well, we'll have the 50-50 raffle. And then we'll also have a donation box for if you want to donate towards them. And prizes. And prizes. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. Such as who can hit the ball the farthest? Ooh. And then who can hit the ball the shortest? <laughs> and who can hit the ball the most accurate? <laughs> so, looking forward to that. It's going to have a good time. Tough ball. Also, uh, drag brunch. Pride on the river. Um, what's the date? I can't see the date. Saturday the 24th. Saturday the 24th. Of September. Of September. Yes. I'm looking at Ice Cream Social and see the 24th. So, okay, Saturday the 24th, 1 till 4. If you want to stay that long, hopefully you'll kind of meander over here by then and uh, we'll, have, we'll have our service here. But uh, we're looking forward to that. I think Cindy and I have already signed up to go for that. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody there. What else is it? That it? Where, where is that one at? That is um I think that's the Sheraton Hotel, Hotel on the River yeah, oh, yes. downtown Tampa. Sheraton Hotel, downtown Tampa. Yeah. And you stay for the, the stay. Yeah, you stay you have the, the, there on the river. Behind. The boat the boat parade kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which some of our church members will be in. Which yes. We might have just had a church here. <laughs> Cool. Cool. There's a There you go. All right. Hospitality. We are having hospitality after the service. If you'd like to join us in the for a few minutes in the end. Okay.
the fellowship part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And next week, we're going to do a potluck. So, no. 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 that starts in September. <laughs> it was in the newsletter. <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I was in that meeting. So, so, like I was saying, potluck starting in September. Okay. And uh, look for your look for the notice in your newsletters, and so you can know when to when to bring your, your yummy food. Today's mints. Thank you, mints elementary. What I did was I contacted Mintz Elementary. We did not, because we were so busy with our move, we did not get to do our, our um, backpacks and supplies for the kids. So I contacted the counselor um, at Mintz and asked her to get with all the teachers and give us their wish list. And we would see what we could do to fill their wish list. Hopefully she'll get back with me um, first of next week. We can put that list out to you, and you can see what you can do. We can bring it right here into the service, and we'll make sure that the teachers are not spending all of their money um, because they don't make enough money to do all the things that they do for the kids of our community. So looking forward to doing that with Mintz. Am I done that? Yep. All right. Okay. <laughs> so that is, that is our announcements, and we will go on to our benediction. Let us bless and encourage each other with our benediction. Put it on the screen. There it is. Christ has no body but ours, no hands nor feet nor wheels but ours. Ours are the visions through which Christ's compassion is to look out on this world. Ours are the feet and the wheels with which Christ goes about doing good, and ours are the hands with which Christ blesses the sound and blesses all the world. Amen. I need to go outside. There's some money. I love